history of Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine, originally known as Terak Nor, was one of the most historically, politically, and strategically important space stations in the Alpha Quadrant during the latter half of the 24th century. The space station was constructed by Cardassians in orbit of Bajor during their occupation of the planet. Under Federation administration, following the Cardassian withdrawal of the station, was relocated into the Bajoran system's Denoris Belt. There, DS-9 became a vital commercial point and defensive outpost due to its location near the mouth of the Bajoran wormhole. It later became a key strategic location during the Dominion War for both Dominion and the Federation Alliance. Owner, Bajoran Republic. Operator, Bajoran Military. Crew, 300 to 2,000 Bajoran and Starfleet. Capacity, 7,000. Docking facilities, six large docking pylons, three medium docking ring ports, nine small docking ring ports, six landing pads. Armament, 48 phaser arrays, rotary mounts, 36 phaser emitters, stationary mounts, three phaser emitters, sliding mounts, 48 photon torpedo launchers, 5,000 photon torpedoes. History, Terok Noor. Terok Noor was the station's original Cardassian designation. Built by Bajoran slave labor during the occupation of Bajor under the leadership of Cardassian Union between 2346 and 2351, its original purpose was to serve as a refinery for uridium ore that was mined from Bajor surface. A process carried out in temperatures as high as 55 degrees Celsius. Therefore, Teraknor had extensive ore refining and transport facilities that occupied the large docking pylon structures and was built to accommodate up to 7,000 humanoid-sized people as well as process up to 20,000 tons of ore a day. The station also served as a command post from which the Cardassian prefect of Bajor, most notably Gold Dukat, oversaw the military aspects of the occupation. In one of his recorded messages for the counterinsurgency program installed on the station, Gul Dukat described Terak Nor as being a paradise compared to Bajor. Like the planet it orbited, the station operated on a 26-hour day. In 2365, Gul Dukat took the unusual step of approaching a non-Cardassian as a chief of security on board Terak Nor. Odo, a shapeshifter discovered on a derelict ship near Bajor some years before, had ties to both the Cardassians and the Bajorans on the station. In 2369, the Cardassians decided to withdraw from Bajor after 50 years of occupation. Unable to move the station across to interstellar distances, they left the outpost in its high orbit. Before departing, however, the Cardassian soldiers rampaged across the station, removing or destroying a large portion of the station's equipment and killing several shop owners. It is not known for certain why the Cardassians chose to abandon the station rather than destroy it to prevent its use by the Bajorans. The Cardassians likely plan to reoccupy Bajor at some time in the future. As evidenced by their prominent role early in Deep Space Nine's second season. In the non canon Millennium Book series, however, it is revealed that the self destruct system was actually shut down by Garrick, who had recently returned from a brief trip six years into the future, where he had been given a memory node containing Dukat's command codes which he had used to shut down the self-destruct before erasing his memory of that future. Deep Space Nine, the Federation. Following the Cardassian withdrawal, the Bajoran Provisional Government petitioned for Federation membership and also for Starfleet assistance in repairing and maintaining Terak Nor. A complex arrangement was established in which a Starfleet officer would have overall authority in running the station while the station remained sovereign Bajoran territory, while a representative of the Bajoran militia would serve as the station's first officer and as liaison to Bajoran government. The station was renamed Deep Space Nine and Benjamin Sisko appointed as commander. As 
As station commander, one of the most important facets of the station Cisco sought to develop was commerce. The Cardassians had allowed a small series of businesses and entertainment facilities to operate in the central multi-level market area called the Promenade. Because almost all the shops were owned by non bajorans Cisco had hoped to convince many of them to stay and help build a trade network through Bajoran space. In particular, Cisco convinced Quark, owner of Quark's, the largest establishment on the promenade, to maintain his business on station as an example for others, as well as to become a community leader and eventually chairman of the Promenade Merchants Association. The station quickly became an important facility for Starfleet. Over time, several hundred starships docked at the station for various reasons. The USS Enterprise D was the first starship to dock at the station in 2369 when it transported the majority of the station's Starfleet crew to make up their posts. The Enterprise returned to Deep Space Nine several weeks later to help repair the Bajoran aqueduct system that had been damaged during the occupation. The USS Voyager docked at Deep Space Nine in 2371 on its way to the Badlands in search of the Maquis ship Valjean. It was the last of the Alpha Quadrant locale the crew of Voyager visited before being transported to the Delta Quadrant by the caretaker. Five years later, the station helped Starfleet Command to contact Voyager in the Delta Quadrant by providing interstellar phenomenon forecasts. Only days after the Federation took control of the station, a monumentous discovery changed DS9's purpose forever. With encouragement from Kai Opaka, Sisko, and a science officer, Lieutenant Jadzia Dax, searched for the mythical celestial temple of the prophets, hoping to find a cause or idea to help unify the Bajoran people. While on board the runabout USS Rio Grande, Sisko and Dax found that the only known stable wormhole in the Milky Way galaxy which crossed over 70,000 light years from Bajor in the Alpha Quadrant to a point near the Iteran system in the Gamma Quadrant. The presence of a stable wormhole inside the Bajoran system had an enormous impact on commerce throughout the region, making the system one of the most important locations in the entire Alpha Quadrant, a fact recognized by the Bajorans, the Federation, and the Cardassians. Major Kira Nuris, DS9's first officer, ordered the station moved to the mouth of the wormhole in order to cement Bajor's claim. Despite the massive forces and pressures involved in moving the station, with only six working thrusters, Chief of Station Operations Miles O'Brien devised a risky method by which the deflector shields were altered to lower the station's internal mass to a level sufficient for movement at speeds necessary to reach the wormhole. The station was positioned close to the mouth of the wormhole, approximately a thousand kilometers from its event horizon. However, the Cardassians had not completely abandoned the system, maintaining surveillance activities in the region. They quickly found out about the wormhole's discovery and attempted to claim the wormhole for themselves. Gold Ducat ordered his warship through the wormhole and was apparently trapped on the far side when the beings controlling the wormhole collapsed the instruments. A short time later, three additional Galore class warships under the command of Gul Jassad of the 7th Order approached the station. Following a brief armed standoff, the wormhole reappeared and the ships returned. With the Rio Grande towing Ducat's warship with a firm Bajoran Federation claim established on the wormhole, the Cardassians withdrew. The impact the wormhole had on the station was enormous, rather than a minor orbiting service station and transfer point, DS9 had the potential to become one of the top commerce stations in the entire quadrant and one of Starfleet's most important outposts. Eager to explore the vast new territories of the Gamma Quadrant, dozens of races established trading relations with Bajor and began sending starships through the wormhole. At the same time, DS9 became the first point of contact in the Alpha Quadrant for any native species traveling from the Gamma Quadrant. Within the first two years, ships operating from or passing through DS9 contacted with at least 12 different cultures. Bajoran Affairs Deep Space Nine was also a unique place for constant contact and cooperation between people from Bajor and the Federation, and therefore became a point of tension at times. In late 2369, DS9 became the center of controversy between Bajoran religious fundamentals instigated by then Vedic, Win, and pro-Federation factions. The incident brought the attention of the fierce contrast 
to elect a new Kai following the disappearance and apparent death of Kai Opaka earlier that year. Wynn protested the ideas taught in DS9 schools by volunteer teacher Kiko O'Brien about the wormhole creating a rift between some conservative Bajorans and secular Federation representatives. In early 2370, an extreme faction known as the Alliance for Global Unity, also known simply as the Circle, began an uprising against the Bajoran Provisional Government. During this coup, the station became a target of the insurgents as the Circle attempted to force all non-Bajoran influences to leave. All Federation and civilian personnel were ordered to evacuate the station, but Commander Sisko chose to remain behind with a group of volunteers hoping to prevent the Circle's takeover. A division of the Bajoran Milita, working under the direction of Minister Jaro Essa, leader of the Circle, boarded the station and assumed control. General Krim and Colonel Day, commanding the forces, engaged in a cat and mouse game with the small Starfleet contingent for two days. Evidence was eventually revealed that the Chamber of Ministries that the Cardassians were secretly arming the Circle using the Krasani as intermediaries. With this damning revelation, the Circle's rebellion collapsed and Krim returned control of the station to Sisko. In later years, there were occasional flare-ups where Bajoran and Federation interests clashed, but none were nearly as explosive. Over time, almost all resistance to the Federation influence on DS9 and Bajor disappeared as Starfleet continued to prove its good intention. In addition, the increasingly prominent role of Sisko as the emissary of the Prophets, a major figure in Bajoran religion, helped build the acceptance for his position as station commander. The Maquis in 2370, the Cardassian freighter Baknor inexplicably exploded immediately after undocking from DS9. A previously unknown group in the Cardassian demilitarized zone calling themselves the Maquis claimed responsibility. The Maquis were dispossessed Federation citizens resisting the cessation of their home colonies to Cardassian control and were arming themselves with mostly Federation contraband weapons. A short time later, the Maquis also kidnapped Golducott from the station while on board for consultations with Commander Benjamin Sisko regarding a situation in the DMZ. Although DS9 was not located in the DMZ itself, the Bajoran system's proximity to that area made the station a major target for related operations on the occasion. Most notably, in 2372, the Maquis hijacked a shipment of 12 Federation and industrial replicators, which were being sent to Cardassia to provide relief in the wake of the Klingon Cardassian War. Michael Eddington, the senior security officer on board DS9, publicly defected to the Maquis in this incident and later went on to unify the various Maquis cells under his leadership. The Dominion War. Deep Space Nine's greatest fame, however, came in its role of defending the Federation and the Alpha Quadrant from the Dominion invasion. Around Stardate 47950, Benjamin, Sisko, and Quark, while on a camping trip in the Gamma Quadrant with Sisko's son Jake and Quark's nephew Nog, were abducted by the Jemadar, the soldiers of the Dominion. A representative of the Dominion boarded the station and informed the crew that the Dominion would not tolerate intrusions into its territory and intrusions were defined as any vessel that entered the Gamma Quadrant. After the Galaxy-class starship, the USS Odyssey, was destroyed in battle against the Jemadar, DS9 was suddenly placed on the front line of the new interstellar conflict. Weeks later, Starfleet assigned the experimental warship USS Defiant to the station to provide additional line of defense against the Dominion threat. In addition, Commander Sisko launched a crash program to upgrade and expand the station's own tactical systems, adding new heavier shield generators, more powerful phaser arrays, and a large battery of photon torpedoes. These upgraded weapons actually saw their first use against the Klingon warships in their abortive attack on DS9 in early 2372. In addition to the threat of the invasion of the Jemadar, the Dominion also posted another more sinister threat infiltrated by the Changelings, the Founders of the Dominion. Because these beings could assume any form and avoid detection by almost any normal sensors, the potential damage and espionage and sabotage was enormous. 
DS9's crew helped pioneer several methods that tried to combat this threat, including phaser sweeps and blood screenings. When the Dominion finally entered the Alpha Quadrant in 2373, the first battle was surprisingly not fought at DS9 as anticipated. A large fleet of more than 50 Jimadar warships bypassed the station and moved instead to annex the Cardassian Union at the invitation of Golduka. DS9 becoming a marshalling point for both Klingon ships retreating from their former Cardassian conquests and for Starfleet as well as a squadron of Romulan warbirds that joined the fleet. However, the Dominion chose not to launch an immediate attack on the station and the fleet dispersed. After securing the Cardassian territories, the Dominion began sending weekly supply convoys including dozens of fresh warships through the wormhole. Without sufficient forces, the station personnel could only watch as more and more troops and warships poured into the Alpha Quadrant. As the Dominion also began securing non-aggression packs with several regional powers, Captain Sisko, with the approval of Starfleet Command, began to blockade the entrance of the wormhole with self-replicating mines. In response, the Dominion launched a massive assault fleet to capture the station and take control of the wormhole. In the ensuing battle, DS9 accounted for the destruction of over 50 Jimadar and Cardassian ships. Additionally, the Defiant was successful in completing the minefield, sealing off the wormhole. However, Dukat committed additional ships to mount another assault, and facing overwhelming numbers, Sisko decided to abandon the station. DS9 was also a diversion, while the Dominion and Cardassian forces were committed to capturing it. A combined Federation and Klingon attack force destroyed the Dominion shipyards on Tauros III. When the station was retaken by Cardassians and their Dominion allies, it reverted back to its original Cardassian designation, Terok Nor, and was once again commanded by Dukat. Although it was still officially owned by the Bajoran government for all interests and purposes, it was once again a Cardassian station. The station soon became the site from which Dukat, Weyun, and other Dominion personnel directed the Dominion War. However, because the minefield operated independent from the station, Terok Nor played no other important role in the Dominion War efforts, aside from serving as a command and resupply outpost. A ruling council, including Odo, was later formed. Spurred on by the suicide of Vedic Yasmin, Kira Nerys formed a resistant group that included herself, Jake Sisko, Rom, and Lita. They were also assisted by Quark and Toral Zial. Facing an invasion on several fronts, Starfleet was unable to mount a counteroffensive to retake the station for several months. In mid-2374, the Allies launched Operation Return from Starbase 375, aimed at recapturing the station and preserving the minefield. Under the command of Captain Sisko, the Allies won a major victory despite heavy losses. At the same time, Kira and Rom attempted to sabotage the anti-gravity emitter in order to preserve the minefield. They were unsuccessful, but did disable the station's weapons, leaving it defenseless. Captain Sisko took the Defiant into the wormhole in a desperate last stand against overwhelming Dominion reinforcements. Sisko was contacted by the Prophets, who agreed to stop the Dominion forces to protect their emissary. With the reinforcements gone and the Federation and Klingon forces on their way, the Dominion abandoned the station. After the return to Federation control, DS9 became the headquarters of the combined Allied 9th Fleet. For the remainder of the war, DS9 functioned as a major repair and resupply depot for Starfleet, Klingon, and later Romulan forces. In addition, the major offensives that culminated in the First Battle of Chintoka and the Battle of Cardassia were launched from Deep Space Nine. Post-war. In 2376, the crew of Deep Space Nine predicted that a pulsar would pass close to the Midas array. Lieutenant Reginald Barkley of the Pathfinder Project fired a tachyon beam at the pulsar, resulting in a micro wormhole which allowed brief contact with the USS Voyager in the Delta Quadrant. Station Layout Deep Space Nine's structure was unusual by Federation standards. Its basic form consisted of a central core assembly containing most primary systems connected by crossover bridges to a series of two concentric rings for habitat and docking facility, and a series of three sweeping pylons containing ore processing and additional docking facilities. The station had at least five transporter rooms. Central Core 
The central core was a roughly cylindrical structure consisting of several terraced platforms containing several key facilities. At the extreme dorsal end of the core was the operation center and the subspace communication antennae, as well as the deflector shield generators. Below this assembly was a three-level promenade, a public area for commerce and recreation. The promenade also housed the station's infirmary, the security office, the Bajoran temple, and quarks. The lower section of the core contained engineering and support facilities, including at least one large industrial replicator, the computer core, and multiple deuterium fuel tanks. At the extreme ventricle end sat the six fusion reactors. Command Level The command level was part of the central core of Deep Space Nine. It was the primary operation center for the station and contained primary access to all major operations of the station including science, tactical, and flight control. It also consisted of the office of the commanding officer, Habitat Ring. The Habitat Ring was the inner ring of the station structure, intended primarily for housing of most of the station's semi-permanent residents. Spaced along the ring were also six landing pads used by Starfleet runabouts and other small craft. The station itself could accommodate 7,000 people. The station only housed 300 in 2369. Also mounting along the habitat ring were three large protrusions upon which a large portion of the station's armaments were mounted, as well as its tractor beams. The habitat ring is also the place where the weapons were stored. Docking Ring The docking ring was the outer ring of the station structure and was used primarily for moving and storing goods for the starship docking facilities. Twelve large docking ports were distributed around the perimeter and numerous cargo bays were connected to these facilities. In addition, a series of six thrusters were mounted on the edges of the rings. These thrusters were intended mainly for maintaining orbital position. Six large sweeping docking pylons emerged from the docking ring, three from the dorsal and three from the ventricle surfaces of the docking ring to give DS9 its characteristic spiny shape. At the extreme end of each pylon was an additional docking port for a total of six on the pylons, which could accommodate larger ships up to those approximately the size of a galaxy class. The majority of the pylon's initial structure was used up by ore processing facilities. The docking ports where the docking pylons intersected the main structure and the capacity of launching torpedoes. One of the airlocks along the perimeter of the docking ring was airlock 17. Support Vessels Deep Space Nine had a number of support vessels on hand from 2369 to 2375, 16 Danube-class runabouts and two Defiant class starships had been assigned to Deep Space Nine at some point. Several were destroyed or lost. During the first two years of service, the runabouts were instrumental in the defense of the station and exploration of the Gamma Quadrant. The runabouts were even responsible under the Commander Sisko and Lieutenant Dax for the discovery of the Bajoran wormhole. In 2371, with the threat of the Dominion becoming a concern, Starfleet Command assigned the USS Defiant to Deep Space Nine. A few years later, in 2375, the Defiant was destroyed by the Second Battle of Chintoka on Stardate 52861. Vice Admiral William Ross delivered the USS Sao Paulo to the station, albeit a little late. This caused Commander Sisko to comment, no way to start a relationship. Starfleet Operations also gave Captain Sisko special dispensation to rename the Sao Paulo to Defiant.